Yes, hello. Hello. Hi, so my name's Eliza. I'm, co- I'm calling for the Administrative Appeals Tribunal in the matter of McLean and Comcare. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, and just to confirm, am I speaking to Dr. Richard McLean? Well, actually, I've changed my name by Depol, but um, for all intents and purposes, yes, you are. I would like to, there is no one else here. I've, I've just been released from hospital. I've just got in the door this morning. I haven't had time or the opportunity or the dignity or the equity or um, legal right to have an advocate. You can just call me Rich, Dr. Rich if you like. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Mr. McLean, I appreciate what you just said. You just come out of hospital. Uh, today's uh, um, direction here uh, is interlocutory hearing is just to consider the applicant's uh, request, uh, sorry, the respondent's request that the hearing. Uh, that there be a preliminary hearing in relation to a particular issue. Uh, the, the request relate the issue to which the request relates is whether or not uh, you were an employee of the agency. Um, the proposition is that if you weren't an employee of the agency, then the whole claim, workers' compensation claim, falls away. Uh, and uh, th- therefore, I think, the, and we'll hear from us quite shortly, that uh, I'm guessing that uh, she'll be contending that therefore that it would be an efficient way to approach the claim to have that uh, what uh, characterise as a preliminary issue resolved up front. So, so you're trying to point. shoot me right in the head before um, I get to a chance to a hearing. I'd like to interject with a couple of things I'd like to say in that at the actual moment, for a few months, I've had no food and no medication I'm squatting as a vagrant, the victim of a conspiracy that the Attorney General, MP Greg Hunt, Senator Birmingham and other MPs condone. I'm hungry. I'm the centre of a conspiracy that is a vile victimisation of a singular person and that's against the law. Victimisation is against the law. I am bankrupt for no reason. The government is condoning murder because... I was literally murdered in a hospital and that was covered up and the murder of my former partner who he was present at, who owes me $500,000, who was an ASIO employee. The Attorney General and Government and Birmingham and Reynolds and Hunt and others all condone this and it's cooked from the absolute top and you have to abide by the Charter of Human Rights of People with a Disability or this cannot proceed. You must acknowledge the Attorney General has condoned this already to lose and I don't know why I am being punished and victimised and why I do not have any agency to report to police to actually be a whistleblower at either IBAC, ASIC, APRA or the Commonwealth Ombudsman. And in actual fact, for me to prove a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice in the High Court, then all I have to do is for my prosecution to prove that any act of omission was to pervert the course of justice. I have uploaded a lot of documents to the AAT and clearly with this evidence and the fact that you, Fennell, uh, Minister Fennell, or uh, sorry, I don't know how to address you, um, is a public official and and must um, abide by the Charter of Human Rights for people with a disability and also the Charter of Human Rights in more general terms, 
clearly with that evidence and the fact you have um, acted outside of that is intentionally breaking the law. It's intentionally perverting the course of justice. And that's why um, government agencies via systemic oppression from the top are trying to kill me in order to um, save the reputations and the um, money and the power and privilege of very powerful people. I believe you have wanted to kill me and I have already died. This is why killhim.info exists because I've been trying, I've, what's happening is they're trying to appropriate illness with poverty. That's why I've been locked up recently. And I've just been released from hospital this morning. I got in about 45 minutes ago. I have had no food apart from what I had in first hospital. And it is, un, it, it, it is absolutely um, not fair for a person to suffer this amount of indignity, inhumanity, and have his human rights shattered and his very human value absolutely desecrated. A public official must not act without this, outside the Charter of Human Rights, which means equal and accessibility to the law and freedom from exploitation. I have clearly proven this in um, the words that I have put together, and I have been absolutely and utterly catastrophically character assassinated. I will still pursue my case with the AAT and um, this work cover case, but I feel that as the Attorney General, via my evidence I uploaded this morning, has already confirmed, I feel framed by the information provided, a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice that is already in place, and that the AAT, including um, um, the senior member Fernell, has already committed um, um, a, a crime against me, and it's a conspiracy, a vile victimization, and illegitimate legal practice. It's taking advantage of a brain damaged man who I cannot get help for with police, with IBAC, with APRA, with ASIC, I can't be a whistleblower, the Ombudsman, and I reserve under this right, the right for an adjournment or the opportunity, it is, which is my right for an equal and legal representation framed by the information that I've uploaded this morning. I have made my statement. I refuse to participate anymore when it's inequitable, it's illegal, and you have all already broken the law and I seek that I don't withdraw from this. I still pursue it, but I will do it in the High Court opposing the AAT, the Attorney General, Greg Hunt, the government, and the um, Officer of Prime Minister in Cabinet who refuse to release me my freedom of information. Okay, Th thank you for that, Mr. McLean, uh, or Dr. McLean. Um, uh, Mr. McClain, can I just understand? Uh, are you, uh, is it your contention that you are too, uh, uh, that your condition makes it impossible for you to proceed without representation? Uh, and there's a follow-up question, so I should put that to you now. The follow-up question is, 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 if that is what you're stating, uh, I've, my understanding is you've also said that you have sought but have un uh, unable to pursue. Uh, procure representation um, is, is that firstly is, is the first proposition correct is it your contention that you are unable to proceed without representation it is illegal against um, the charter of human rights um, for people with a disability and I um, I acknowledge that I have a disability which has never been acknowledged by any um, medical practitioner um, because I have submitted evidence to you that I lost the entirety of my blood in a suicide attempt from the same kind of government oppression that is happened before my death and I was found unresponsive with no pulse and no blood. Now, you all are aware of this and you, what, what you were saying is, I'm saying I'm forgetful. I'm saying I'm framed. I'm saying I'm at a disadvantage, which you, um, Minister, have already 
agreed in a recording that was published on killing.info for me to save my own ass. Now, you are confusing um, poverty with illness. There absolutely is an illness. It's a marred memory um, 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 situation and it has not been acknowledged and you're trying to identify me with illness. However, um, it is actual a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, which is causing my distress. And I've made my statement and I refuse to go on and I refuse to be identified and victimized as someone with illness when it is actually a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and it is the society and systemic institutions including you including the lawyer including this unjust situation and including the government which is ill and not me okay If I hang up the phone now, are you going to cancel this um, meeting? Please let me continue. So you've made a workers' compensation claim. You, you, you do know, I believe, that your entitlement to workers' compensation does depend on you being an employee of the agency. You haven't acknowledged what I've already said, and you haven't acknowledged that I've said you have broken the law as a public official. You've broken the law as a public official to not allow me agency to act with equity and equality before the law. You are a public official, and you have to act within the Charter of Human Rights. You've already broken the law. I've made my statement, and I request that if I hang up the phone now, that you keep this case open, and you don't try and talk over me, and that you don't try and um, trick your way out of this, because the evidence that I've uploaded to the Ministry of Appeals Tribunal this morning explicitly show a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, and um, there is no turning back from that. You can't go back now and say, um, try and trick me um, into, um, into tricking me out of my compensation when I've been tricked out of so much already. I reject that this meeting go on and I reserve my right to pursue this and I reserve my right to pursue it in the High Court. Please do not talk over me. Please do not um, identify me with illness. Please do not uh, try and trick me into um, saying that um, you know, I am or aren't an employee. It says very clearly on the NDIS website, an employee can be a sole trader. I don't know, I don't understand legislation. You yourself, Purnell, said that it is, it, uh, I have a disadvantage. You have acknowledged that and I have the evidence and this is a further corruption and it is a further um, example by omission that um, you are perverting the course of justice and it is systemic and it comes right from the top and it is condoning murder, it is condoning tax fraud, it is condoning rape, it is condoning all sorts of things that I cannot report to police and I have made my case. I choose to hang up now unless you've got something to say which um, would either um, identi identify to me that you are closing the case because I reserve my rights or whether this case will remain open for my um, pursuing in the federal court. Uh, Mr McLean, I can proceed in the absence of a party who's had reasonable notice and I propose to proceed if you hang up. Pardon me? I can proceed in the absence of a party. If you propose to hang up, I can continue to proceed because you've had reasonable notice of today's hearing. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. I have lived in utter poverty for the last entire year. I have not had the opportunity to contact anyone. And in fact, I have. I have contacted Jeffrey Tricker. He refused to acknowledge me and he made me lose $2 million at AFCA only three weeks ago. Um, he's a Liberal member and um, he is framed against me and I haven't got a friend or colleague on my side. I've been character assassinated, I told you. I can't go to police. I can't get a lawyer. My family has abandoned me. I have not a friend and I'm utterly alone in the world. I can't access anyone who will support me. It is absolutely impossible. I am under investigation. It is not fair. 
I'm utterly isolated and you are putting illness on me and you're putting the excuse that I should have had um, the opportunity to. I, I, I say to you, um, Pernell, would you have the opportunity to come in today if, if you have not had money to exist for the past entire year? No, you would say you would not be here because you have power and privilege and money and opportunity and you are being discriminative and victimising me for being in poverty. What, what I'm trying to do is progress your claim, Mr. McClellan. What I'm trying to do your is claim. saying you're trying to progress the claim. Please, please, it's my opportunity. I have not interrupted you. Please don't interrupt me. You've made a claim for workers' compensation. And the only thing that you're entitled to the claim is that you must be an employee. The respondent disputes that you are an employee. The government has already killed me and then covered it up. Now the government has a 20 year experienced lawyer in order to kick me in the head right at the end. I refuse to um, go on with this because it's inequitable. I haven't had the chance to go to the police like any ordinary citizen can. I haven't had the chance to have protection from the Attorney General like any ordinary citizen does. And I haven't had the opportunity to get um, my um, NDIS payments paid and R M Minister Reynolds condones me to vagrancy as does Greg Hunt, as does Simon Birmingham and as does everyone else. Your boss, Michaeli Cash at the Attorney General has condoned this for me to already lose and henceforth I refuse for this to go forward because you sir, as a public official, have a responsibility to act within the Charter of Human Rights of people with a disability and also within the Charter of Human Rights. I haven't had opportunity, I haven't had equal opportunity and I've been discriminated against, vilely victimated against, vilely victimated against. I have had a conspiracy to prefer the course of justice which I will prove in the High Court and I reserve the right not to speak anymore and I do not want to go on because I know absolutely that this is framed, this is cooked and you are corrupt.